Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The Leviathan is on the run. Jesus has won the great victory for us, and Leviathan, our ancient enemy, Lucifer, Satan, is on the run. And we have Father Vincent Lampert here. He's the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. And we're going to dig deep. This is part two of a series. We're going to dig deep into more of actually what happens during an exorcism and then how the church's protocol leading up to and and following uh, the pastoral care for, for some. And this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Cindy and I are here in Waikiki Beach. Yesterday we had torrential rain, perfect waves, torrential rain. So we uh, we hit out. I actually, on rainy days, I have this thing where I, I cheat a little bit on my low-carb regimen, and we got our umbrellas, and we made it over to this coffee shop that has these really great little pastries, and uh, we indulged. So I don't know if that's a venial sin or not. But anyway, we had a, have having a great day here in Waikiki Beach. Do you know that when the Scripture refers to Leviathan, the dragon, as he's referred to, there's one passage, and I can't tell you exactly where it is now, but he's referenced as the fleeing dragon, that, God, that Jesus has defeated the fleeing dragon. He's not the dragon facing us roaring. He's fleeing. But there is the tail of the dragon, and he sweeps at us with his tail as he runs. You know, Long Ride Home uh, season three and season four, we make that run. We, five of us members of our pack, we made the run down the most dangerous uh, highway in the continental United States. There's 318 S turns in 11 miles. And almost on every corner, you're going to see uh, a cameraman filming. And um, unfortunately, about 19 people a year die on that road. It's called the tail of the dragon. Every biker knows it. Every drifter knows it. Every Corvette owner knows it. And the problem is you go there and people trying to break speed records and you're just trying to cruise down on your on your motorcycle. Uh, but it's called the tail of the dragon. Jesus has defeated Satan. It's, 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 I think it's like this. It's like in World War II, all these battles were fought. And in the final, the big battle that was won, I believe, was the Battle of the Bulge. The war was basically won then. But we had to finish cleaning up. There was things left to do. It's like a team that's, that's battled through three quarters and they're ahead by 50 points. They still got to finish that fourth quarter. Jesus has won the great victory, and right now we're just cleaning things up in anticipation of his, of his near return. But the, Satan is fleeing, and the Catholic Church has a, a very wise understanding of how the different ways that we defeat Satan. I know so many priests tell me, the great, you know, right at the beginning of Mass, we do a confession, uh, and we, uh, and we, and then also we have the gift of reconciliation. We have confession, which is great. At baptism, there's a minor exorcism done at baptism, even. But when things get a little bit uh, more gnarly, then the Catholic Church has uh, the rite of exorcism, and um, we're fortunate to have Father Vincent Lampert with us here today. His book, Exorcism, just says it right there, Exorcism, uh, the battle against Satan and his demons. And this is the year of St. Joseph, the terror of demons. And I think every man, every Christian should be likewise a terror. Because if you could see what the enemy sees when you walk by with that, that the brightness of the Lord shining out within you, um, I can tell you, I had an experience the other day. I was walking along with Cindy, and I had this vile uh, statement said to me out of the mouth of someone as I walked by, and I just said, that's a demon uh, speaking to me. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, it's an honor because I know I'm carrying Christ, and, and they lash out when they see that. Father Vincent Lampert, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's good to be with you again. You know, when I'm with you, you're just such a mellow guy. <laughs> but in my heart, there's this surging of excitement because I know uh, the Holy Spirit um, is with you. I feel the, the presence of God when you're here, and I know that um, you're doing such a mighty work. Not a work you would ever chosen for yourself, I'm sure. 
No, uh, exorcists are appointed by their local bishop. Very few of us would have ever volunteered for the job, but bishops using the wisdom they have as the uh, leader of the local church will always try to find one or more priests in their diocese they believe have the necessary qualifications to be an exorcist. Even in the ritual itself, it says that the priest chosen should be known for his holiness, his piety, really sense of humility. Right. So important. I had a friend of here, friend here last weekend, his daughter and her friend and Tom Clark from Cocoa Beach. We paddle out, went surfing. And then afterwards, they're very strong Christians. And I think that one of them used to, was raised in a Catholic home. She's Filipino and she was raised in the Catholic home, uh, but is now evangel- evangelical. And he said, when my daughters were on the way, when we were on the way over here, they really wanted to meet you. And, I, and they said, yeah, but he's Catholic. I mean, how can he, I mean, <laughs> like he's Catholic. I don't, we don't quite get it. And he goes, well, let me tell you this about Catholics. There's one thing I know. He doesn't know a lot about us, but there's one thing I know. When there's a real heavy demonic uh, situation, we call on the Catholic priests to deal with it because it gets beyond what we can do. And I think that's a really heavy thing because Satan is, uh, the demons hate authority. And we have the authority of apostolic succession within the church and uh, the anointing that comes with that. And, and, and uh, I think it's really interesting that, that even non-Catholics know. I mean, not that non-Catholics can't, can't go, through, go through exorcism and, and pray the deliverance prayers too. Uh, they're Christians. But, um, but when it gets really heavy, you call on a priest. So we have, that, we have that heavy header with us today here, Father Vincent Lampert. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to ask you, um, last time we really set the table for the, the part one of this dialogue. This time I wanted to just say, and I'm going to take maybe a couple segments to do this and start off, okay, there's going to be an exorcism. And let's say it's a little bit more than n- normal uh, situation that you're expecting. I mean, if, if there's such a thing as a normal deliverance. What happens? How does the prayer start? What steps do you take? What do you see manifesting? And how do you contend with the enemy when you're, when he's you know, basically shouting back at you or take us through, okay. take us, take us through as if, as if we were flying the wall watching. So once the decision is made to use the official right of the church, then I will prepare myself. So I will spend time in prayer. I myself will go to confession. I will celebrate mass. I will determine where the exorcism will take place. I like to remind people that the devil doesn't get to choose where he will be defeated. The church herself will make that determination. So an exorcism is always performed in a sacred space. So in a church, in a chapel, oftentimes in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Wow. And then I will then choose who else will be present. There's no such thing as exorcism tourism. So nobody's there out of a sense of curiosity. But certainly I'm present. The person who's afflicted, a family or me, fam, a family member or friend of theirs, and then other people I may invite just to uh, to pray during this particular mm-hmm. prayer of the church. So we're looking for people to be prayer warriors as the exorcism is taking place. And it's important for people to prepare themselves too. Are going to be present because when a demon manifests, it will actually look for what it believes to be the weakest link in the room. And I've had situations during an exorcism where once the demon takes over the person's body using the person's eyes, the demon will look around the room and try to determine who that weakest link is and then will begin to attack that person, sometimes physically, sometimes even verbally. Do so you... I, I will oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Father. Now I was going to say, and then part of the opening ritual calls for me to say a prayer asking God to protect and safeguard everyone who will be participating in the ritual for this particular person. So in, in, in regards to that prayer team, I know Jesse Romero is a big part of that, of a prayer, a deliverance prayer team. I've been there. I've been involved even in my naivety leading, um, deliverance, not, not, not meaning to, it just kind of happened that something like that. I had to deal with a few things sometimes, a few times, but, um, I think the, the prayer team really needs to know it's the prayer team. It's not there to observe. It's not there to discern necessarily. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think in your book you mentioned not to make eye contact. Right. You're not there to be. It's not a theatrical presentation. 
they're there to pray. Why do you tell them not to make eye contact? Because when you make eye contact with the demon, then somehow you're trying to make a connection with them. Mm. And certainly when you're there to pray, the connection needs to be with the power of Jesus Christ. So don't let the demon get the upper hand by, by being, you know, fixated on what the demon is doing. Because again, the demon doesn't want to be cast out. It wants to stay where it is. So it will do everything in its power, even trying to connect with someone in the room, maybe rattling them, getting them, you know, afraid, giving mm-hmm. into anxiety, fear, that type of thing. We're talking with Father Vincent Lampert. We're going to take a break, come right back, and we're going to go uh, more deeply in this next segment into what actually transpires during an exorcism. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Life is an adventure, isn't it? With Jesus Christ, we'll be right back. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just really want to take a moment and thank the mama bears out there. I got a letter from a woman named Joan, who, a um, very special letter, who's been through a lot. You know, the mama bears suffer a lot um, and are in some places even have a wound in their heart for the, 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 their, their family members, especially the men in, the, uh, in their family, whether sons or brothers or f- husbands. But these mama bears, Cindy knows, when we go into mass, I see they've already been there praying, and they're sitting in rows, often with a wedding ring and by themselves, and a rosary. They're there with the Lord, though, and they're praying, and they're interceding. And I just want to thank the mama bears out there. I see you. Uh, I, I'm. It's like one of the most apparent things in my ministry is to see the mama bears and although this show is kind of known and my my ministry is kind of known as a focus on 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 men here's the thing i draw my arrow i pull the bow my my target is a man's heart but i know there's going to be a lot of uh but i know if i can reach a man's heart that the it'll reach the women's heart too where sometimes things that will reach a woman won't reach a man i know the women already there and ready to hear the real, the real and the gritty. So, Mama Bears, thank you so much. Uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, subscribe to the newsletter, and you can al- also, if you want to be a supporter, you can go there and find out how to support us. You get a Mama Bear coffee mug if you do. But uh, every, we're going to begin to write to the Mama Bears every month now in our in our emails that we send out weekly uh, because we do appreciate you. And I just say you're the energy, uh, the, the ever ready energy bunnies of our of our ministry. It's your prayer that moves our ministry. It's the Mama Bears' prayers that move this ministry. Starting with my own mother, the mom, my Mama Bear, when she died, I was with her. Glorious moment when she went to heaven. From that moment moment my ministry exploded and so I know my mama bear prays for me too we have father Vincent Lampert with us his book exorcism the battle uh, against Satan and his demons he's the exorcist for the archdiocese 
of Indianapolis, and he's taking us through the process. So let's go back now. So now you have your, your room with the, the prayer warriors in there, who, who, who their main their participation is to pray, um, not to make eye contact with, with the demon. Um, but let's go back. Now, now we know who your team is. Do you ever have another? Do you ever have that person's pastor there with you, or another priest with you? Ideally, that would be the case. So I, you know, over half the people who contact me are not Catholic. They come from other Christian traditions. Some come from other non-Christian faith backgrounds. Some from none whatsoever. But if the person does have a pastor, I always would want that person to be present because. I can pray for them and and the person is going to need ongoing pastoral care and ultimately that's going to come from their own local church community so it's always best to have that person's pastor involved if possible and so it's you and a pastor your prayer team and is there anyone else in the room then other than that there would be uh maybe a family member or friend of the person who's afflicted just to uh, bring them i would point out it was it's never wise to do an exorcism just one-on-one so it should never just be myself and the person who's afflicted it's always best to have a uh, team approach you remember mm-hmm. when jesus sent out his disciples he sent them out in pairs By two, so it's right. that notion the important role that other people play especially when it comes to this particular prayer of the church it's the arms helping those. yeah and it's the arms of the church reaching out Yes. You know, it's the family of God reaching out, not just, you're not on this, this journey alone. You don't meet, see the exorcist and then leave, and now you're on your own. Father, I'm sorry to have interrupted you. What, what were you about to say? No, I was just going to talk about the important role that other people play. Mm. So, uh, again, it's always a, a team effort. And the focus, again, is always on the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. I think you mentioned earlier You know, the Catholic Church, I like to tell people, doesn't have a monopoly on the practice of exorcism. You know, it is a liturgical right for us. We have a prescribed way for it to be done. But for me, I believe that the number one quality is one's own personal holiness and virtue. It's the power and glory of God that we radiate in our own lives that ultimately destroys the power of the darkness of the devil and his demons. Amen. And the thing about, so as, as you begin the, the, the uh, okay, so now everyone's in the room and the person sits in a chair, I guess, and you sit and you're standing or, or, or facing them, uh, you and your, the other pastor and, or how, what, it, what does it look like? And then how do you begin your prayer? So I would have the person sit in a chair facing towards the altar mm. there in the church. The blessed sacrament would be on the altar. The candles mm. would be lit. And there could be an image of the Blessed Mother, recognizing that our Blessed Mother is a very powerful ally for anyone who's up against the forces of evil. So the person would be in the chair, the team would be sitting in chairs around the person, and then myself, I would be standing right in front of the person who's afflicted, Mm -hmm. along with their pastor, if they're able to be there. And then to immediately, and again, it's not me, but in the authority of Jesus Christ, taking that role, acting in persona Christi, you know, the Latin phrase, acting in the person of Christ as an ordained priest. And then I would begin by blessing the person with holy water, reminding us of our baptism into Jesus Christ, by which all of us have become a new creation. We have put on Christ. And that notion that we, since we have put on Christ, then demons must flee. Now, what's interesting, as soon as the, the ritual begins, the, manifest, the manifestations begin immediately. And these could include things like eyes rolled in the back of the head, the foaming at the mouth. Again, the demon can only be defeated once it reveals itself. So the very ritual components of the rite itself are causing the demon to manifest so that the battle against it or them, we talked about that the last time, how they operate in clusters, the battle against them can truly begin. And so they're so the hiding. Blessed- Go ahead. I'm sorry, Father. They're, they're, so, they're, yeah, was- they're, they're hiding out, right? But as soon as that prayer begins, it's like, ouch. It's like I can yeah. call it like a cattle prod. Whoa. And, and, and like, oh, no. I, 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 now they know I'm here. You know, the Holy Spirit. Listen, yeah. It's like a child that's in trouble and they go run and try to hide. Yeah. But, uh, 
demons cannot hide when the power and the authority of Jesus Christ is being called upon. So, and so once mm -hmm. the person is blessed with holy water, then I will say the litany of saints. So I will call upon our blessed mother and the saints of the church to come and be present during this particular prayer of the church. And then I will begin with the word of God. Do you, do you yeah. breathe? Do you blow a breath on them for at some point? I thought, you yes, that, yeah. that will come. That will After. come on oh. as when I am giving commands directly to the demons. That oh. takes place just beforehand. Okay. But the notion about the power of the, of the Word of God, you know, when Jesus himself was tempted, he refuted the devil by having a correct understanding of the Word of God. Because mm. even the devil was trying to quote Scripture, but he was getting it all twisted. Right, right. So it's the reading of the Psalms. You know, invoking mm. the power and the authority of Christ, the power of God. You think of Psalm 91, I need not fear the terror of the night nor the evil that flies by day. Oh, I love that Psalm. I just, oh, at the monastery when I was young, they would they would sing that in the evenings. And I just just love that Psalm. And I it's sang, very it, powerful. I sang it to my mother just before she had a, a major surgery. It's just a beautiful, beautiful Psalm. Love that Psalm. 91, Psalm 91. I'm I sorry. had a, I was going to say, I had a group of Marines I celebrated Mass for one time, and some who were not Catholic attended the service, and afterwards, they said, Father, we can tell you this, but we can't really tell anybody else, but before we go into battle, we always pray together Psalm 91. Wow. wow. So it's very, very powerful against our ultimate enemy, which is the devil himself. Yes. Hmm. And then yes. after the Psalms... Then I would uh, read gospel accounts. You know, a very powerful one is the uh, prologue of the Gospel of John. The Word became flesh, mm, and then I other that. accounts. They that's can't what, stand that's it. what it's made the incarnation. Satan, you, yeah, you were saying last week that that's Satan was so riled up because what you can't become man. Those puny little things down there. You, you're, you're a spirit. And really, that they say that was one of the, some. Some say that was the reason for his fall. Is he got so angry at the. Yeah, he couldn't know. accept the yeah. fact that human flesh would be elevated higher than himself. Right. Again, in Jesus in right. the Incarnation, our Blessed wow. Mother becoming the Queen of so Heaven. So they hate that when you start reading those scriptures. Wow. Yeah. And that's why these things are meant to aggravate and cause them. You know, they can try to hide, and I've seen that in my training and even in exorcisms that I've done. Demons sometimes will give the false delusion that they've been cast out or right. they've left. Right. But that during the ritual, the exorcist really wants to continue to put forth the power of Christ, certainly present in his word. So other gospel accounts would be Jesus casting out demons, basically saying to the demons, you've been defeated before, you will be defeated again, so why resist? Now, one thing I love is he would say, he would say shut up or be quiet. I think the, <laughs> the, I think the Greek word is gag yourself or something like that. <laughs> um, and it's interesting when he, yeah. We got to take a break, Father. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Watson Convention. We're talking with Vincent Lampert, Father Vincent Lampert. Um, his book Exorcism. He's the uh, uh, exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and we're gonna. This is part two <clears throat> of our time with Father, and we're gonna be going deeper into what happens during an actual exorcism. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Watson Adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting. The Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach with a deep adventure moment. You know, people ask me, what does it take to paddle out in big surf? You know, 20 foot plus surf is deadly surf. What does it take to paddle out in big waves? My son Jeremiah paddled, surfed 80 foot waves. What does it take to prepare to do that? And I give them my 20, 20, 20 rule. The first thing is you should be able to paddle your surfboard for 20 miles. If you can't do that, 
don't paddle out in heavy surf because big surf can get bigger and you can find yourself locked outside uh, for forever for a long long time second thing is you should be able to hold your breath for the time that it takes the sun to set it's an ancient hawaiian tradition to pray the moment the sun hits the ocean until it sinks beneath it and that's about two minutes and 20 seconds if you can't do that don't paddle out in big surf the other thing is we dive down grab a rock 20 feet deep and then run underwater if you can't do that don't paddle out in big surf but the thing is in life you're already out in big surf whether you like it or not you are what are you going to do to prepare the 20 20 20 rule spend 20 minutes in prayer three times a day or maybe spend 40 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night but if you're a man and you're not praying an hour every day you're in trouble the people you love are in trouble you should be getting up early and slaying dragons your children should see you pray if you're not praying 20 20 20 a day then we what we say in hawaii when we see a guy on the beach that's wearing surf clothing but he never goes out in big surf we call them posers if you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're losing out. And the other thing, it's so much easier to pray for an hour a day than to pray, pray for five minutes. Because when you spend 30 minutes with the Lord, you want to spend 40. When you spend 40, you want to spend an hour. So follow the 20, 20, 20 rule in life. Spend an hour every day in prayer. This is Bear Wozniak with thedeepadventure.com. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. You should probably turn down your radio station right here because I'm about to make an invitation that you probably should run from. I'm talking to the men. Uh, so many of you uh, actually are looking for a way to grow in virtue and to become the man really that your, your wife knows you can be and what you know you're called to be. Uh, but you don't have that that uh, encouragement or challenge from other men. Uh, women in your life are, are, are wonderful, but you need to be around other men of goodwill. And that's why we've created Bear's Man Cave. Bear's Man Cave, it's a secret Facebook group, so you can't join it by going to Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com. And there is a monthly commitment. It's only $15 a month, but there is a monthly commitment to join because it makes it more real for you. But then you're with these men who, who one of our men prays a rosary every night. I post my ocean catechism. Some men f post their challenges, their prayers, their encouragements, their inspirations, their insights from the Lord. And we have an actual community of men there. And every week or two or one month or whenever I feel like it, we have a Zoom video chat meetup with all the men. Right now, as we're recording this, I've gone through a series with the men, uh, the annual manly tune-up. We're going through every area of our lives. Uh, once a week, we're having a Zoom video meetup, and the men bring their notebooks, and we talk about family and friends. We talk about spouses. We talk about getting you know fitness to witness, being strong and healthy, and tuning up and making goals in every area of your life. We always say a, a goal, a worthy goal, is something that you become, not something that you obtain. It, it requires a growth in virtue. So we're, uh, we'd love for you to go to deepadventure.com and click on right there in blue on the top, it says the man cave. Come and join us, and, uh, and we will gr uh, join each other on our quest to go deeper with God. We're talking with Father Vincent Lampert the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis and uh, his book, Exorcism. Father Vincent Lampert, thank you for being here. So as we begin the process, as soon as you, you're quoting scriptures, but still they, they may manifest right there, but for certain, or, or does it when you first start the commandment in the name of Jesus that, that you begin to see uh, the ugly come out? The ugly comes out right away. Because they're agitated, they yeah. they know what's coming, and so it's like a child throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah, you know, trying to avoid all that. Well, they, I've I've been in situations I've been I've heard them like, well, don't hurt me. You know, they like take pity on me. You know, or or uh, have you? Is it been times where maybe a demon manifests and it goes away, and another one shows up, 
In other words, do you do you, do do you bind and cast out uh, as they come forth, or do you see that thing where we, there one manifests, but then another one um, manifests in its place? Or okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just go ahead and <laughs> give us those kind of that that kind of gritty type of examples, so people know that we're dealing with a real. You know, enemy. in in the older right of the church, because. The right that's used now came out in 1998 by Pope St. John Paul II. It was the very last liturgical right to be updated after the Second Vatican Council that ended in 1965. The older right, which any exorcist is permitted to use, dates back to 1614. Pope Benedict gave permission to use any of the rites because there was some sense that maybe the new right didn't seem to be as forceful or powerful. But in the older right, the demon is commanded to name itself. And on one occasion, when I was doing an exorcism, seven demons named themselves. And literally, the voice, the voices are coming out of the person's mouth at the same time. So imagine mm -hmm. hearing seven different names of demons that are just happening all at once. And you're right. When the demons manifest, we talked about this the last time, how there's a sense of hierarchy within the demonic world just as much as there is in the angelic world. So these weaker demons will go. They will be the first to go because they can't resist. And then those who are of a, a higher ranking, if you will, seem to be more entrenched. Just as in the nine choir of angels, when a third of the angels fell, uh, there's these different uh, hierarchies of, of, of fallen angels, I guess. And, and the younger ones, the lower ones are bullied by the more powerful ones. Um, yep. That's exactly right. So they, you know, being of a uh, a lower ranking, they really can't resist. So and when, so mm -hmm. they could be cast out and maybe the, you know, as you suggest, the higher ranking demons are trying to, you know, throw them out there to give the illusion that, that they're, they're all gonna, gone. So there, in, in some cases, uh, there can be clusters of demons. And the interesting thing about that is like, we, we, my wife and I watch Westerns. I've seen... A uh, and I've seen my son and I were golfing the other day. He saw he he mentioned it the other day a nest of water moccasins. But <laughs> why they're in clusters, it, why that exists is demons are very very legalistic. At what point do you ask them? Do you discern why they have the why they feel they have the right to be there? I know there's someone might have made a vow. Someone might you know it might have been lack of forgiveness, uh, a curse or something. Can you tell us about the different, the main different areas that the demons that that, that you will come to to deal with uh, as to why they think they have the right to be there? What's the doorway? What's the the reason they mm -hmm. feel they can be there? So now I've I've done the ministry now, going on my sixteenth year. So there are eight primary ways that I see that people up a, open up a doorway to the demonic in their life. And I will have identified what the entry point was prior to even beginning the ritual itself. That's 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 so Catholic <laughs> because of the in. I think you call it the intake, uh, kind of a, like an intake questionnaire, yeah. just trying to determine where the entry point was, so that that entry point point can be closed. Well, let so me just ask you a knowing, question: Could it be like someone's if, if someone? someone's mother tried to kill them in an abortion but they that they lived would that possibly be an entry point for a demon or would that be no. it could be because you you mentioned that but that's when i was training in rome back in 2006 one of the uh persons that the priest training me was working with shared the story with me that her mother blamed god for giving her a child that she didn't want even tried to abort mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. it wasn't successful so then she dedicated her daughter to, to satan and she underwent all kinds of satanic rituals and abuses and only when she was 12 did she run away from home and end up on the streets of rome and eventually mm -hmm. make her way to the franciscan priest who was training me so wow that is that is possible is it before we go a little bit further back? Is it possible uh, a generational uh, uh, sort of demonization that you know there's a, there's this kind of generational passing down mm -hmm. of the of this demonic force in in a family's life? Is that is that something? I, I want to do that and then go into these other areas. Is that something that you have seen, where they're there because it's been like a, 
kind of a generational attachment right. just because maybe yeah generational sin habitual sin and so people you know are subject to that as well i've seen that on many many occasions so mm. absolutely um okay and so then you were you were saying uh uh the the eight different main reasons i mean i see people play with fire they do and you know the number probably boards, one of their very yeah go I was ahead to say the number one would be ties to the occult practicing things that very clearly in scripture you know the book of, of deuteronomy in the old testament tells us not to be engaged in practices that deal with magic you know i like to remind people that all magic is inherently evil you know i don't mean an illusionist who's pulling a rabbit out of a hat but magic in its true sense which has forces of you know evil spirits behind it which are the ones who are really responsible for the action that's taking place so ties to the occult is one you know somebody being cursed that's another entry point of uh, being dedicated to a demon we touched on that uh i talk about the entertainment industry you look at mm. today a lot of people are just so fascinated by the devil uh mm -hmm. we talked about generational sin as another entry point somebody that actually invites a demon in mm. somebody who's cultivating a relationship with a demon and then broken relationships that are not dealt with in a healthy manner that brokenness can be an also be an entry point for the demonic into somebody's life you know i have people that i know that uh are actually catholics and they'll go to a psychic <laughs> and i tell them you don't know what you're playing with you know the, uh, the demon may very well well of course the demon knows things right doesn't know everything like he's called evening knowledge but he knows things about your past and he can he can play with you and then give you like well this is what's going to happen and there's such a thing as a familiar spirit where that demon may know another demon that knows someone in your family um, but then that demon uh, tells the future but they don't know the future but then they may go try to make that happen and that's uh, so in that way well I'm gonna go try to make I've said this is gonna happen to this person now I'm gonna go try to make those events happen um, man I would never in a million years uh, go to a psychic we're talking with Father Vincent Lampert the Archdiocese of Indianapolis exorcist in his book exorcism very very well written book it's it's not um, theatrical but it talks about the reality of what happens and but really it's a it's a pathway towards freedom and knowing how weak can be set free or how friends family members that we have can be set free we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wasnick radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to 
is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Fair Wasnick. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter. There's going to be a little box that will pop up. Subscribe, and you get a free uh, audio version of my le- latest book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtues. So we would love to have you part of our pack. So you can go to deepadventure.com to find out more about what we're up to. And um, some, some people who um, donate on Patreon uh, certain levels, they get uh, early access to all of our radio shows, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Plus, uh, you can get access to Long Ride Home, all 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 episodes of Long Ride Home, and even uh, episodes that haven't aired yet on EWTN. So it's kind of cool if you join the pack. We try to be good to you because we appreciate your generosity to us. Uh, we're here with Father Vincent Lampert, the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. He's written a book, Exorcism. I'm going to go into... Uh, briefly the different areas that give them access and then an example of how uh, where you've how a deliverance took place like for example someone who's played with the ouija boards or has gotten into some of the forms of yoga or for my case father martial arts was like that for me when i was young because when i was 19 i i I, i've started training in martial arts as a pursuit of that of religious things and I had to stop for many years, and then later on, I went on and trained in martial arts. But with a, but I had to, I had to, I stopped for ten years to break that, to break that barrier. Um, but what, what, what things like, what are the things that you're seeing people kind of dabble in that is like a recipe for disaster? Well, you're right there. Whether it's uh, yoga, Reiki, things that are that involve Eastern spirituality mm-hmm. that are contrary to our Christian faith, you know, some people may get involved in. Yoga, for example, just because of the physical exercises. But then there's that intrigue maybe with the spirituality that goes along with it. So they may have begun doing yoga just for the, you know, exercise benefit. But then there's that curiosity that leads them down a dark path away from their relationship with Christ. You talked about, you know, people seeing, you know, a psychic. That's all. That's a sad reality that many people even profess to be Catholic will still call upon psychics or medians. You know, psychics and medians don't have any powers or abilities. The church would say that the power that's operating behind them is the power of the evil one. And either these psychics know that, but they go along with it, or they've been duped by the power of the devil in thinking that the power really, you know, rests with them. But in reality, it resides with the devil himself. In astrology as well, I think, is, you know, the church teaches against that. Let me ask you this question. There are different, you know, when, when Michael said, I came, I, I, I came to your aid, but I was detained by the prince of, I think he said the prince of Persia, a demon that he had to do battle with before he could get to a certain place. Principalities and powers, there, there's some demonic, demonic uh, uh hierarchy or whatever over over geographical re- regions there's there's demons that are in charge of like you said hollywood the whole porn industry um the whole new age thing it's like there's uh there's a there's a demonic cluster it wouldn't be the word it's bigger than that demonic legion but there's their hierarchy over hollywood uh, when you go to washington dc i feel two things i feel a, a tremendous oppression and i feel when you go to lincoln memorial you're gonna feel the glory of god but when I'm there, I go. Oh, there, there's a battle going on up here. You know, can you talk a little bit about that? That the the demonic uh, hierarchy. For example, you mentioned Hollywood, pornography, mm. uh, geographical things like that. If if I'm on the right track there. Yeah, you're absolutely on the right track because the church also talks about how there's an angelic hierarchy over geographical places. Mm-hmm. So. Just as much, again, because the devil wants to mimic God's activity as his own. So just as much as God has placed angelic creatures over geographic areas, then the devil wants to assign other demons to geographic areas. Because the ultimate goal is really to dismantle human civilization. Mm. And, and what about, I mean, when you see what's happened to our younger generation, 
in the area of pornography. Mm. It's to me, it's the number one entrance point. As people fall into pornography, they might have been raised as a Christian, but when you start being, when you fall into that, and then you're not able to overcome it, you have to start saying, "Well, I think I'm going to change my philosophy of who God is because I can't change my morality." Mm-hmm. The same thing with uh, what we see in the the same sex attraction and things like that. Um, uh, this invasion to our young younger men and women in the whole area of pornography is 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 a a, gra- a a battle and you know who wins those the mama bears win that battle uh prayers win that battle and then uh and then friends helping friends men helping each other to say you know to 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 help be accountable to one another to 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 break that cycle but um the thing about the catholic church is i've i've talked with other pastors and i've and i've seen a survey of of Protestant pastors, what percentage of your men have a problem with pornography? And they'll say, oh, 10% maybe. But a Catholic priest will say, like most of them, because mm-hmm. men go to the confession in the Catholic Church. <laughs> and so, um, but what about this whole area? Do you, there's this discernment is like, to me, it's like smelling a rat. Mm-hmm. What what do you see in Hollywood, in the, in the pornographic world and, and, and all of that? What do you how do people unlatch from that, disconnect from that? You know, my comments would go back to what's at the very core of Christianity, namely the human person is God's greatest creation. Mm. When you read the Genesis, Genesis account of creation, when God created everything, he found it good. But when God created the human person, he found the human person very good mm. because the human person is created in the image and likeness of God. Praise God. So the devil wants to distort the human person. And, I, mm. you know, pornography does that to the nth degree because it degrades the human person to just as an object. Mm. And, you know, again, you know, when you think about, you know, the devil, when people see demons, they're always animalistic in nature. We go back to the story of creation. What did God create on the sixth day? He created animals and he created humans. And what separates humans from the animals? God gave us the seventh day. He gave us the Sabbath, the day that we can choose to honor and glorify God. Mm. So that separates us from animals. But the devil and his demons have rejected God, which is why whenever they manifest, they're always animalistic in nature. Mm. I was even speaking to someone the other day who was was recounting how they had gone to a uh, satanic uh, black mass And on the way home, they saw a demonic creature, said it was a very beautiful creature from the waist up, looked like a man, but the bottom was the body of a goat. Mm. So there's the notion that, you know, the devil is distorting the human person. And we see that in so many ways, whether it's through pornography, Mm. whether it's through sexual identity now or how, you know, gender. Again, the human person, there seems to be so much confusion around the gift of human sexuality. Mm-hmm. I even find it interesting that when Adam and Eve sinned, what's the very first thing they did? They hid, and why? Because Adam says, I was naked. So yeah. there's that notion that somehow the beauty of the human person got distorted mm. because of what the devil did. And I believe the devil today constantly wants to distort the beauty of the human person because in doing so, he believes that he is attacking God, mm-hmm, and the then also God. destroying, yeah. destroying God's greatest creation. We're talking with Father Vincent Lampert. I, I loved what, the, what what John Pope is it Saint Pope John Paul II. I forget how you say <laughs> it. He said the problem with pornography isn't that it shows too much of a person; it shows too little. You don't see their soul. You don't see their heart. You don't. You see them as an object instead of as a subject to love. So, Father, I'm going to have to. I'm going to ask you on air. Um, can we please have you back one more time because we didn't get oh. this all covered? <laughs> I know you're very busy, um, but I would really love no, to. No, I one. I would welcome the opportunity. You know, I, I think I shared with you before some exorcists are publicly known. Many choose to remain anonymous, but I've always threw my thrown my name out there because I want to use my appointment as the exorcist here in Indianapolis mm-hmm. as an opportunity to educate people on what the church believes about the ministry of exorcism, but even more importantly, on who the devil is and why he's really nothing to be afraid of. 
that, that's what I want to go back. I want, that's why I want to come back one more time because I want to talk about, okay, that moment, that process, a little bit more about the process, and then when that last big ugly one goes, then what happens, and then how does the church nurture and care for, for that person? We're talking about Father Vincent Lampert. He's the exorcist of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and his book is called uh, Exorcism. And we want to ask Father right now as we close, by the way, if you feel like you have this sort of a, a need, Go to your local priest and talk with them. Father, can you pray a blessing of protection as we wind up here today? Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we ask that you would watch over, bless, and protect all those who are listening to this program. May they always be mindful that your power is greater than the power of evil and that you desire all persons to be saved. So may all of us know mm. constantly your ongoing protection in our lives and give us a firm conviction that evil is nothing to be afraid of if we are truly re uh, rooted in our relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask your blessing upon all of us now in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I love that scripture verse. Who have I in heaven but thee, O God, and there's no, nothing I desire upon this earth beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail, but you are the strength of my life and my portion forever. Thank you, uh, Father Vincent Lampert. Got to go, you guys. We're going to have Father back again, and uh, we'll go. We'll, we'll, hopefully, the third part, we'll be able to finish this. We love you guys. As we say uh, on Long Ride Home, Viva Cristo Rey. And as we say here in Hawaii, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Ah. <laughs> ha means breath. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.